evening, everyone. Good evening, David. We have all had a good afternoon. It's lovely just to praise and worship the Lord together, isn't yes. it? Yes. Um, At times we could sing on, couldn't we? Absolutely. We just love praising Him. If you have your Bible with you tonight, turn with me to Psalm 119. I was <laughs> thinking the same myself. <laughs> and we're going to read the whole psalm. <laughs> He's going to be pleased to hear. He's only going to read one verse. And it's uh, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet Amen. and a light to my path. Amen. I'll just have a word of prayer. I know pastors already pray, but we'll just... Have another wee word of prayer. But we just thank you, Lord, again for bringing each of us here, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the time that we have had just lifting your precious name on high, Lord, that name which is above every name, Lord. And Lord, as I always pray, we pray, Lord, that our praise and worship would sweet sounding to you Amen. this evening, Lord. We pray that you were exalted and lifted on high, Lord, because you're so worthy of our praise. Lord, as we turn to your word now, Lord, Lord, bless speaker and listener alike, Lord. Our prayer is, Lord, that it would just even speak to somebody who doesn't know you as Saviour, Lord. And, Lord, that we would hear a word in coming days that somebody has got right with you. Lord, we ask it all in your name. Amen. 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 So just read that again. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I don't know whether you noticed um, last Sunday, um, last Lord's Day, the dense fog that was hanging over Belfast Lock. And because we're quite high up here in Ballysillan, we can see right down to the lock. But last Sunday, if you had a look down, you wouldn't have seen anything. The fog was just sitting right over the harbour there. And where our house is... If the wind is blowing in the right direction, at times we can hear the ship's horn sounding where, we, where our house is. And just last week as we arrived home, we were able to hear the ships sounding their horns down at the harbour. I know whenever there's a heavy fog, ships will sound their horns to make other vessels nearby aware of their presence. The horns help the ship navigate its way through the fog. Maybe you've at times been driving on a country road at night time during the fog and you have the lights of your car on. Sometimes it seems to make the fog worse when you have your lights on, doesn't it? But the lights will help you if you drive slowly and carefully to make your way through the fog. And you know, at times in our lives we feel as if we have entered some fog. You know, the path in front can seem uncertain. We aren't too sure which direction to take or what way to turn. It can cause confusion and it can cause disorientation. And we will all have times like this in our lives. Ships have horns, cars have headlights, and church, as we enter fog, we have the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord Jesus blesses us with so many things. Countless things that we wouldn't even be able to number them. He's done things for us that we're not even aware of. We might never be made aware of those things. He blesses us with his love. He blesses us with his grace. Mm. He blesses us with his mercy, his forgiveness, his healing, his provision, and the list goes on and on. And another way in which he blesses us is by giving us his guidance and direction. You know, it's such an amazing thought tonight that whenever we turn to the Lord, that he's always there listening. He never ignores us. We never catch him unaware. He's always there listening, hearing every single word of our prayers. And if we find ourselves not knowing which way to turn, not knowing which direction to take. If we find ourselves uncertain about the path before us, we can turn to the Lord in prayer and we can have that reassurance that he will guide us and direct us in the way we should go. 
You know, as we read through our Bibles, we can see that the Lord does indeed give his guidance and direction. And there are many examples of people who were guided by the Lord. And whenever I think of that, the first person I think of is Jonah. God had instructed Jonah to go to a town called Nineveh and to speak out against all the wicked things that they were doing. But Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't want to travel to Nineveh. And he tries to run from the Lord. He tries to go in the opposite direction to where the Lord is telling him to go. And Jonah gets into a boat that's heading for a place called Tarshish. But while he's on the boat, the Lord sends a strong wind which causes the sea to be rough. The conditions are so bad that it tells us the boat was actually starting to break up. Those on board try to lighten the load. They start throwing cargo into the sea. And then the captain approaches Jonah and he asks him to pray for their survival. And those on board begin to question. They begin to question why this storm has came upon them. And then they figure out that it was Jonah. Jonah tells them all about how he had fled from God. And they realise that this is happening to them because of Jonah. And of course we know that Jonah then tells them that if he picks him up and throws him into the sea that the storm will cease. So they do what Jonah had told them and they pick him up and they throw him into the sea. Once they have done that, there is a complete calm on the sea. The wind stopped and the waves were calm. The Lord prepared a fish to swallow Jonah and he remained in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah realises then that he has done wrong. He realises that he has been disobedient to the Lord's instruction and he realises that he can't run from God. He begins to cry out to the Lord from inside the belly of the fish and the Lord then commands the fish to spit Jonah out onto dry land. God then instructs Jonah a second time to journey to Nineveh. This time Jonah goes the direction the Lord wants him to go and he makes his way to Nineveh. You see, Jonah at first wasn't obedient to God's guidance, but the Lord put him on the right path. There are also examples in God's word of people who were obedient to the Lord's direction. Noah is an example of this. He was instructed to build the ark. Everyone around him were laughing at him, thinking that he was completely insane. But Noah never once wavered. He fully trusted the Lord and he carried out in obedience what the Lord had told him to do. The Lord had given Noah plans and dimensions on how to build the ark and Noah followed these instructions completely. He was on the right path, God's path. He was going the right direction, God's direction. Amen. David is another example. David frequently looked to the Lord to direct him. Whenever he faced trials, he turned to the Lord. He asked the Lord for guidance before he fought the Philistines. And due to his faith in the Lord and being obedient to his direction, he defeated Goliath when nobody thought that he could. You know, church, we can be certain tonight that if we put the Lord at the center and we heed his guidance and direction, he will always send us down the right path. Amen. You know, sometimes we aren't sure where the Lord is taking us, but we can trust him that he has us on the right path. You know, a, a couple of years ago, we went down to Enniskillen to stay for a week. And it's beautiful down there. It's like a completely different world, as I'm sure you know. And we decided one day that we were going to hire a boat and that we were going to go out sailing on Loch Earn. And it was brilliant. It was just a really, really good day. We had a really, really good time. But before we set off, the member of staff gave us a map of the lock so that we could navigate our way around. And my dad, my dad, if he's been somewhere once, he can go again. He he knows everywhere, like the back of his hand. I'm not like my dad. Um, (laughs) Put it this way, on Loch Earn, there's lots of tiny islands that you can stop your boat off at. 
and you can go for a walk around. I, ma I managed to find one of those islands. <laughs> so there was literally loads of them, and we were only able to find one. Everything just looked the same when we were out on the water. And we had hired this boat out for four hours. And after we'd been out on the water for two hours, Janine very wisely said, we may turn around, because if it's taken us two hours to get here, it's gonna take us two hours to get back again. It's a good job Janine was there. I would have been sailing around Loch Earn yet. <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, along the side in the water, there was these signs with numbers on them. And you could look at the number on the sign and then you looked on the map and you seen where the number was on the map. And that helped you figure out just whereabouts on the loch that you were. And this should have helped us get back to where we had started. But the numbers were very small and we struggled to read them. And we sailed a wee bit closer up to the one of them and I damaged the propeller because we had a rock and we struggled all the way back. And then whenever we got back, I sailed past the entrance to where we had <laughs> to return the boat. And there was a member of staff directing us. He was giving all this. And I'm thinking, what's that idiot doing? <laughs> but then we realised that I'd missed the, the opening and we had to turn the boat around. Eventually, we ended up on the right path and we were able to return the boat to where we had started and we were greeted with a lovely 50 pound fine for damaging the propeller. <laughs> you know, but sometimes in our lives, we are not sure where the Lord is sending us. We are not sure if we are even on the right path, if we are headed in the right direction. Sometimes we miss the path we should have taken and we end up going the opposite way. But the Lord, without doubt, will show us the way to go. Amen. You know, we can be quite stubborn people at times. We at times feel that we know about something more than what anybody else does. And at times we're even silly enough to think that we know even more than what God knows. <laughs> and we can try to take our own path. We can try to go our own way and to go our own direction. But it says in Proverbs 16, verse 9, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Mm -hmm. You see, we can have our own plans, but the Lord's plans are the best plans. Amen. Amen. You know, we think we know what's best, but we don't. <coughs> the Lord knows what's best. And if we follow his path, we can be sure that it's the right path. At times we don't know which way to turn, but we know who we can turn to. And we can seek God's guidance in every single area of our lives. You know, we should bring the Lord into every area of our lives. Bring the Lord into every situation, every decision yeah. that we have to make. The Lord should always be our first port of call whenever we need guidance. You know, it's amazing how at times we try to find advice and guidance from other people. We try and get advice and guidance from other things. We turn to these things first instead of turning to the Lord. But again, bringing it before the Lord in prayer and seeking his guidance and direction should be our first priority. Maybe you feel tonight that you want to do something for the Lord and you have something on your heart, but you're just not sure. You can pray for the Lord's guidance. We can be certain that he will let us know if he wants to use us in that way. Maybe you're struggling financially. You can pray for the Lord's guidance. We can be certain that he will show us what to do and he will provide for us along the way. If you're thinking of getting a new job, thinking of moving house, struggling with addiction, many more things. We can seek the Lord's guidance in these areas and he will indeed guide. Sometimes we have to wait for the Lord to show us the way in which he wants us to go. But we know that everything will be done in God's perfect timing. Amen. The Lord has a purpose and a plan for each of us and for our lives. That well-known verse in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope 
and a future. Be <coughs> without doubt that the Lord wants what's best for us and we can trust him that his plans are the best. You know, at times when we find ourselves in fog, we can feel as if we are alone. When facing storms and trials, we can begin to wonder what the Lord is doing. We pray and we wonder if he's even hearing our prayers. We feel as if our prayers are just hitting off the ceiling. Sometimes when we pray about something, the thing that we're praying about seems to get worse. And we can have that feeling of being alone. But church, we can be certain that when going through those times that the Lord is always constantly with us. We often say he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And we say it so often that we fail at times to really take (coughs) in. We say it so often that it just rolls off our tongue without us really thinking about it. But again, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. He is always with us by our side. He never steps away from us. He never leaves us on our own. Not even for a second. Just like that footprints poem says, <coughs> during those times that he carries us. Yes. The path that we are on can feel rocky and unsteady. It can be dark and we are unsure of the path ahead. But we can be thankful that the Lord will light the way ahead. <coughs> Again, he will guide us and directs us, or direct us. It says in Psalm 37, verse 23 and 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. It also says in Psalm 32, verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. And the Lord will indeed light the path in front as he guides us and directs us. One of my favourite places in Northern Ireland is Donegadee. And there's nothing in it. There's absolutely nothing in it. But I just love it. I just think it's such a lovely spot. And I could just sit round at the harbour there for hours and... I have so many lovely memories of going there as a child with my mum and dad. And of course, when you think of Donegadee, the main site is the lighthouse. And you know, even in the darkest of nights, ships out in the pitch black sea can see the light of the lighthouse shining, Mm. showing them which way to go, showing them how to get to safety. Again, the Lord will shine his light and show us which way to go to bring us to safety. We are so thankful to the Lord tonight for his faithfulness. And as I often say, we really do wonder what we would do without him. You know, for those of us who are saved, we are also thankful for the light of Jesus. And the second we get right with the Lord, the second we accepted him as our own and personal saviour, we became carriers of his light. And it's up to us to show his light to the lost around us. We have to shine the light of Jesus into the fog and darkness around us. Each of us has the task of telling others about the Lord and spreading the good news of the gospel. And this is something that we should be really eager to do. Now isn't it sad that we can be a lot more eager about lesser things? Hmm. A few years back, my favourite band were coming to do a concert in Belfast and They were playing down at the Odyssey Arena and it was the first time that they had played down there at the Odyssey. And the tickets were going on sale at nine o'clock on the Friday morning. And I thought to myself, I I need to beat the queue. I have to make sure I'm the first in line. I have to get the tickets. So I got up early on the Friday and I went down to the box office at the Odyssey Arena and I was there at 5.30 in the morning, 5.30 a.m. And I was the first one there, and I thought, this is great. I'll definitely get the tickets that I'm looking for. But you know what time the second person in the queue came up? Remember, and the tickets went on sale at nine. The second person in the queue arrived at a quarter to nine. And I'd been there from half five. 
know, again, church, at times we can be more eager about lesser things. Mm. But we should be even more eager about telling people the gospel. You know, we're living in the end days. The Lord Jesus is returning soon. Yeah. Time is running out and we need to let people know about this wonderful Saviour. Jesus says in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For those of us who are saved, this is a verse that we are all very familiar with. But for those who may be watching at home who don't yet know the Lord as Saviour, again, he is the only way. You know, I've spoken tonight about the Lord's guidance and direction and about paths that we would find ourselves on. But for those of us who don't know the Lord as their Saviour, the only path that leads to eternity in heaven is the Lord Jesus. Mm. You know, we're living in a world that is upside down. Everything seems to be accepted. We can't speak out about anything. However, nobody seems to blink an eye whenever people speak out about the Lord. People can say whatever they want about the Lord and it seems to be accepted. We only need to put on the news. We only need to go for a walk in the Belfast city centre. <laughs> we only need to go on to social media. And if you look whenever God's mentioned on social media and you look at the comments, it's frightening just some of the comments that people are typing in there. But we can be thankful tonight that the Lord said that he would build his church Amen. and the gates of hell will not prevail Amen. against it. Amen. You know, the lost, the unsaved will be hearing all types of lies from the devil because the devil is the father of lies. That's right. Many people thinking and believing that they will get to heaven after they die and yet here on earth they haven't given the Lord Jesus a second thought. They think it's just about being a nice person or about doing good works. But you know some of the nicest, most generous people that you possibly could ever have met are in a lost eternity tonight. Mm. The only path to heaven is the Lord Jesus and by accepting him as saviour. You know, for those who don't know the Lord, you know Jesus loves you. Yeah. And he willingly went to the cross took upon him all that suffering and all that pain. All the blaspheming that was directed towards him, all the name calling and the belittling. And his love was so unconditional that he chose to go through all of that for each and every person. They hit him, they spat in his wonderful face. They put a crown of thorns on his head so that they dug in through his skin. They hammered nails through his hands and feet and they nailed him to the cross. And he died on that cross. He shed his precious blood Thank on you. that cross. He went through all those horrible things for each and every one of us and for each and every person. You know what a wonderful saviour we serve. Amen. We can praise his precious name tonight that on the third day when they went to the tomb, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Yeah. Because tonight we serve a risen Saviour. A Saviour who is alive and well. Amen. God sent his one and only Son for each and every one of us. The Lord Jesus left the splendour of heaven for each and every one of us. Yes. Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 11 says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, yes. even the death of the cross. Bless you, Lord. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, yes. that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God. Oh, the yes. Amen. Hallelujah. It also says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Yes. You know, the Lord Jesus is coming back very soon. And people need to be ready. Yeah. And if you've accepted Jesus as your saviour, you are indeed ready. You will spend eternity with him. But if you haven't accepted him as saviour, then you're not ready. And you will end up in a lost eternity. The good news is that for those who don't know what the Lord is their saviour, can accept Jesus as saviour before it's too late you can make sure that you are on the right path. Amen. You can have your sins forgiven. You can be washed as white as snow and you can be set free. Yes. No longer bound by sin, yes. but forgiven and free. The chains of sin can be broken and will be broken the second you give your life to the Lord Jesus. Yeah. You too can have the victory through Jesus and what he did on the cross. And all you have to do tonight is accept him and live for him. You know, for those who are watching at home who don't know the Lord, make sure you're on the right path before it's too late. You know, when we find ourselves in fog and we don't know which way to turn, when we need the Lord's <laughs> guidance and direction, as well as turning to the Lord in prayer, we can also turn to his word. We should make time to read his word every single day. Yes. It's funny how we always manage to find the time to do lesser important stuff while our Bibles sit on the shelf. Yet we should make time to read the word of God. Amen. I remember seeing a picture on Facebook of an old worn tattered Bible that was all dog-eared and it was in a really bad condition. And it said above the picture, a Bible which is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. A Bible which is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. The Lord will speak to us through his word. He will guide and direct us through his word. It says this in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says this, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And again, our main reading from earlier, Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Yeah. You know, we can read through God's word and we can be directed and guided by it. We can find the right path and we can go the way the Lord wants us to go. Just as I bring this to a close, you know, we're so thankful tonight for the many blessings that the Lord surrounds us with. And again, one of those blessings is his guidance and direction. At times in our lives, we do indeed have to make decisions of some sort. We enter fog and we're not sure about the path that lies ahead. We're not sure which is the right path. The path is uncertain and we don't know which way to turn. We can have that reassurance tonight that we can turn to the Lord. We can be certain that the Lord always hears our prayers. He never gets tired or fed up of hearing our voice. He is always there listening and we can turn to him in prayer and seek his guidance and direction. Bless the Lord. You know, I know I've mentioned this before, but 
one of the things that really amazes me about the Lord when he hears our prayers is that we won't be the only ones praying to him at that moment. Yeah. There'll be people all over the world, millions of people all over the world, speaking to the Lord at the same time we are, in all different countries, and all different languages. And the Lord hears every single word of every single prayer, as if we have them all to ourselves, yeah. as if it's just us and him. You know, he's so wonderful tonight. Yeah. So we can turn to him and we can seek his guidance and direction. Thank you, Lord. And he will indeed show us the way to go, lighting up the path in front as we go. We can also turn to his precious word and it too will point us in the right direction. Sometimes people find themselves on the wrong path and they try to go the opposite direction, just like Jonah. But in the end, the Lord made sure that he was going the right way. And we know for certain that God's path is the right path. You know, sometimes we might not be sure just where the Lord is taking us, but we can indeed trust him that we are on the right path. Oh, yes. And we can trust him that he knows exactly what he is doing and exactly where he is taking us. You know, in every single area of our lives, in every single decision we have to make, we should always make the Lord our first port of call. Yes. Before turning to other people or other things, we can turn to the Lord first and ask for his direction. We know that he has a purpose. We know that he has a plan for each of our lives and for each of our family's lives. And again, God's plans are the best plans. They are plans to prosper us Amen. and not to harm us. Plans to give us hope and a future. You know, as the Lord shows us the way to go, he will shine his light on the path ahead. And for those of us who are saved, we too are to shine his light to those around us. We have to show them the love of Christ and we have to tell them the good news of the gospel. We need to tell people what the Lord Jesus did for each of us on the cross. Tell people that he died and rose again for them. Yeah. You know, it's amazing just how many people outside of these walls don't know anything about the Lord Jesus at all. I know Pastor has shared that story many times about the time he was preaching on Noah and the two girls thought it was a movie and didn't know that it was something that really happened. You know, the people out there don't know who Jesus is. That's right. I think years ago, Kids were sent along to Sunday school. Everybody knew who Jesus was. That's not the case today, church. There's people outside those walls who know nothing at all. And we were given the Great Commission. We were told to go and make disciples. Yeah. We have to tell people that he died and rose again for them. We need to tell the lost around us that the Lord Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's it. He's the only path to heaven you know church what a wonderful God we serve tonight Amen. a God who will guide and direct us in the way in which we should go whenever we turn to him and we can be certain tonight that he is always with us whenever we find ourselves going through the fog but just closing a wee word of prayer bless you Lord Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the time that we have spent in your house tonight, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything that has taken place in your house today, Lord. But thank you, Lord, for this morning, Lord, as well, Lord. And Lord, it was lovely for us to be here this morning. And it's been lovely for us to be here again this evening, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have been one of our number throughout today, Lord. Lord, where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have been a part of us this morning and this evening, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that everything has been done today, Lord, that you would be satisfied with tonight, Lord. Mm. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you have been magnified, that you have been glorified and exalted, Lord, in this house today. You are so worthy of our praise, so worthy of our thanks, Lord. Lord, where would we be this evening if it wasn't for you, Lord? 
It doesn't even bear thinking. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord. Lord, again, Lord, we pray for those that we need to touch from you at this time, Lord. Lord, you know each and every single person, each and every single name, Lord. Lord, each and every single circumstance, Lord, every single worry that would cross their mind, Lord, you know each and every single one. You're an all-knowing God. Mm. Lord, that fills us with great reassurance tonight mm. to know that you already know what we are facing before we even ask you about it, Lord. Lord, so for those that need a touch, Lord, we just pray that you, the great physician, Lord, would just place your healing hand upon them right now, Lord. And Lord, that you would just bring them back to full health and strength from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you would surround them with your peace that we can't explain, not as the world gives, Lord, but as you give. Mm -hmm. Lord, that peace which surpasses all understanding. Lord, for those that are waiting for test results or anything like that, Lord, we pray for nothing other than good news. Yes. And Lord, we'll be mindful to give you the glory. Yes. So our prayer is that we would see these people back out with us again next Sunday, Lord. But we just thank you, Lord, that whenever we enter a storm, whenever we enter fog, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're always with us that you never leave us and that you never forsake us. Glory. But thank you, Lord, that when the path ahead seems uncertain, we thank you, Lord, that whenever we find ourselves not knowing which way to turn, we thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you, our great guider and our great director, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you will send us in the path that you want us to go. And, Lord, we know that if we are obedient to that, Lord, that we are in your path, Lord. We're going your way, Lord, which is the best way, Lord, because you have the best plans for each and every single one of us. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that something that was said this morning, something that was said this evening, will have spoken to somebody who doesn't yet know you as Saviour. And I use the word yet, Lord, because our prayer is that one day, Lord, they would get right with you. Amen. Our prayer is that we would even hear in coming days, Lord, that a new name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, we'll be mindful to give you and you alone the glory. So, Lord, we'll love you tonight, Lord. Yes, we'll Lord. praise you, Lord. We'll thank you for everything. Yes, I pray, Lord, that you would now part us with your blessing. Lord, keep us all safe and healthy and well throughout the week. Mm. Bring those who are coming tomorrow night back again tomorrow night. Bring us back on Tuesday night yes. and again next Lord's Day. Lord, we already look forward to gathering together to praise your precious name and to lift you on high. Lord, we ask all these things in your name, giving you thanks. Amen. Mm. Amen. Bless you. Bless the Lord. Mm.